Hey guys, so we got good news and bad news. So let's start with the bad news first. I'm here with Josh and we've been going over the timelines and we're running way behind and we're going to have some issues catching up. The main issue that I'm seeing is with all the stimulus checks and stuff, people aren't wanting to work and there's nothing I can do about it. Normally we have 25 people in this job. Today we have what Josh, seven, eight people, yeah, something like that. So we don't have the number of people working here that we normally do. And it doesn't have anything to do with the boom town or anything like that. It's just simply they're getting enough more money to stay home than they are working. So it's almost impossible to get them here. So I'm gonna make this a little longer now. I'm gonna be a little long winded today. So we're looking at, we have Tuesday, we're gonna start installing tile. And I've got to give the tile guys two weeks. Normally I give a week for everything, but we're normally same thing. We normally have six tile guys here. So far there's been two guys. And I keep talking to the main boss man. He says the same thing. He can't get his guys to come in because of the stimulus program. So we simply have to work around it. So long story short, we've got tile two weeks. Josh has got two weeks to trim out. He's got a week of electrical left. Then we got to hang our drywall, sand, float it. Um, we're looking at, by the time we get to a point, probably the 13th of May, before we're actually at a spot where I can comfortably say, we're done. But with us being done, what happens then? The floors have to be patched, sanded, and finished. So that adds at least another week onto that because they got, they got patched their floors, Sand and poly, they usually get that done in three or four days, but you have to wait seven days before you can start packing furniture in here because you'll scrap, you move one piece of furniture on a raw floor and you scratch it, right, Josh? Yeah. Okay, so that's the bad news. So I wanna walk you through some of the processes and explain some of this. Come in here. This is the shower pan system that we install. This is old school, this is new school. This is part of what's called a, a shootler system. So these get filled with concrete and we cut these down to our, our custom curb height. Usually we put whatever granite you put on your vanities is what we put on here for your curbs and we put granite up here. It just looks better, it leaks less. So Josh will have these all done by tomorrow afternoon. Josh is off Friday, so Monday he has to come in, and this has to dry for a very long time. Here's why. This is part of the system. You see how this is pulled up a little bit? We let them dry because sometimes this happens, and if you prematurely put your tile up and then this pops up after the tile's done, tile pops up. So we let them dry thoroughly. Monday, Josh is going to red guard all these, and that's a 100% latex paintable membrane. That needs to dry, so that means Tuesday before we can start laying the top. And the other reason we use this system is we tear them out all the time. This is permanent, it's a perfect slope. A lot of tile guys build their own and build them out of concrete. What's the first thing that happens with concrete? Cracks. When it cracks, cracks the grout line. Then all of this would be filled with water for the next 15 years and you always would wonder why you, when you come into your bathroom it smells a little musty it just doesn't smell dry for lack of a better word that's why that's why we use this system it's always dry you finish your shower it goes down the drain your your vent system dries out your bathroom then the shower is 100 percent completely dry now here's another thing a point to make everything gets done the shower glass cannot be measured until we're 100% done. So when this bathroom is 100% done, they'll come in and laser measure the glass. And then we're looking at two to three weeks before you get shower glass. Can you still take a shower? Yes, but you won't have shower glass until really after we're long gone. Um, I think I said in here. Now, go back here, Josh. This is the good news. 
not a bearing wall, we're fine. So here is our thought. Right about here, again, I'm six foot three. So you remember there was four doors here? Why don't we do this? Imagine TV here. We'll build a two-door cabinet right here with doors that open like this. And this is where your sound system, Xbox, PS4, whatever, all this will go in this cabinet. Then take the two remaining doors, door here, door here, both of them swing back this way, closet on each side. Or it's either that or do open bookshelves and stuff like that, but I figured you use what product we have is here. So that's our thought. Let me know what you think on that. So pause it and let's go to the next room. Okay, so this is the other bathroom and I want to show you this so I can show you a few little details that we do that other people don't. Please don't share this knowledge because it's preparatory, whatever the word is, whatever it is. So a lot of you tile guys, if you saw in the other bathroom, you saw that fabric on the wall, we don't do that. And you saw where it peeled and he was standing close, so I didn't want to do it in there. But we seal these cracks with silicone. The reason we fill these with silicone is your house moves a little each year, millimeters at a time. So if when you have that fabric up like in there, when you do this over time, what happens is like a paper clip, it finally breaks, cracks, or peels. So we fill these corners with silicone, and when the house moves, it just flexes back and forth. And I can take you to showers we've done, what, 20 years ago? It looks like the day we installed them. This is your niche. This is what it looks like. These shelves are, they're adjustable. You can move these up and down. But that's what your niche looks like right here. Here's your bench. Go ahead and show them that, Josh. Um, we set these 17 and a half inches. Why 17 and a half inches? It's the exact height of a toilet. So it feels exactly the same. So it's a nat when you sit on it, it feels just as natural as when you're sitting on a commode. There's no weird sensation it will fall backwards or maybe you're, you're too far forward and your feet slip or something. So it just has more of a natural feeling. Uh, can lights here, can lights there. Switch, switch sides with me. I wanna to talk to him about these cabinets. So now you see your can lights, you see how well I'm lit up. Now this is the girl's bathroom. So imagine this, a vanity comes across, wraps this corner right here. So you'd have end panel here, then open space where she would sit would be an open space right here. And then right here is an end panel of a cabinet. And normally what we do is, is Christy would develop a corner cabinet and just give us an end panel here Granite guy comes in, we stand up the end panel against the wall with a scribe to hold it, and they install the granite on it, they silicone it to it, and it never moves. Right, Josh? Correct. Done. Uh, Sometimes we can fit a set of drawers on the right, too. Yeah, yeah. Depending on, yeah, depending on layout. Little makeup drawers, so. Yeah, 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 like little, little drawers, though. Nothing big. Little yep. drawers. Once we, and use your space. Remember... We gave you a distance from here to here. Remember, 21 inches yes. is the depth of the cabinet. So as you eat up this five foot, from memory, five foot, seven inches, wherever it is, as you eat this up, your space gets smaller. So keep that in mind when you're talking to the cabinet lady. I did send her a message yesterday. She was supposed to call me yesterday afternoon. She didn't. This is the first time this has ever happened that they just kind of like, disappeared so I don't know what's happening over there uh, I'm gonna give her a final try and then I think we may have to go somewhere else for cabinets I have used them for so long you got yeah. input Christy's I just said the same thing the other day with her retiring you can tell they're pulling her back yeah and with them pulling her back and now it's like yeah. No more personal text messages on the weekends. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Is I've known her for so long. Yeah. We talk about job sites on the weekends while she's not at work because, you know, it, it is what it is. So we'll just have to do it. All right. Pause it and then come in here. Okay. So boys' bathroom. See, it's all closed in. Um, shower pants still needs to be installed. This is another thing that I haven't shown you yet. You see this, we put down hardy backer before we put down the shower pan. No one else does that. Another layer of protection against the structure. So if it never goes bad, it has to go through the latex membrane, 
the tile, the shower pan assembly, and then it'd have to go through the protected red guard before it ever made it to the structure. So it's just layer on layer of protection. Here's your niche under here, shower heads here, valves here. This is your knee wall put in. This is your system here. On which door are we using on this? Isn't there a little... I think in her responses was she just wanted a flat slab. That's right. We're going to do, do a little... It's called a Luan. Luan. There you go. All right. Pause it. Let's go downstairs. Okay. Now we're downstairs. Now I got some really good news. Look right there. This is the air return. And this is where it's really good news. So we put the air return here. The whistling is gone that you heard the other day and the temperature feels the same. It doesn't matter if you're on that end of the house or this end of the house, the temperature is regulated as it should have been. They should have done this years ago. Don't know why they didn't. So they turn this out now. I guess turn around and get the best way you can, Josh. We have, we have, they just got that pipe standing up. Okay. So, Oops. Best you, can, best you can see me. Yeah. All right. Here's the knee wall for the shower, right? And this is your shower. Of course, this is the sauna. Commode, here's your vanity setup. And this is something that we desperately need. Before we close this in, we need to know what cabinets we have for this room. I can't close it in until it, it's okay if the plumbing's a little off because we can manipulate inside cabinets, but we at least got to get close. So, this needs to be at the tip top of your list on that cabinet. And again, I'm gonna try Christy one more time, but we've got to at least get a design down. Now, anything you need me to do to help, I'm not just putting it off on you to find it, but um, I really thought she'd come through now. Just, I guess what, if we don't get a response by tomorrow, we just start searching somewhere else so we can get to get our designs done. May have to go, go someplace like, uh, if you have them, if you have them in California, Home Depot Design Center, you can go to any Home Depot Design Center and show them my drawing and they can map out a cabinet design for you. So at least we have a design and that gives us time to search for cabinets. Not much time, a little bit of time, but at least we can close this wall in, get some drywall up and get this thing closed in. Keep it rolling, but I want you to walk in here tight, Josh. I want to see the drawings on the floor. So this is what we was talking about. This is this, this is the sauna. This is the knee wall. Here's the door. So that's how close we have the door to the sauna. Now I assume <laughs> I probably yeah, I think I drew the swing a little tight. <laughs> yeah, the door, I'm sure it opens more than this. Yes. But that shows you how tight we have this measured to the wall. Now walk around here so they can see right here. This is the distance between the shower and the sauna. We wanted to leave enough so a hand could get up in here and clean the best they could. I was going to bring and slam it against it, but if they have to service it or something has to happen, I think we need a little bit of breathing room. We just, you just never know. Also, keep in mind that this is about the height can you see me through the light? Yeah. This is about the height of the sauna. All this will be open above it. So you, you can plants or you know fake plants, wherever you want to put there, you can put there. We also have a drop of electrical up here. So we can decide once we're done whether or not we want to put a light shining down on top of the sauna or not. Okay? Pause it one more time. Okay, now. We're here, now you get a visual. This is how this is framed. I went, I went a little deeper than I would have to, so we just have a little bit more depth because we just don't need more depth in the bathroom. So this is a little deeper, but you see how it look here. Recess here, then he's gonna put a header in right here to close this off, and this will let the trim come around like this. Now, I have it, Design like this, but if you don't like it be sure to let me know as fast as you see this video This is your wine cooler section and I've got it framed all the way up to the ceiling so that 
so that we can bring the crown around. You go like this, you come out like this, and then wrap back in like this and keep on going. If you do want it, we could stop the ceiling, stop the, the freezer section back here, and this could be an open cavity up here if you want to like, like turn around and show her the top of the cabinet right there. We could do it. That's a great visual representation on what it would be if we stopped it here. So if I don't hear back from you, we're going to frame it all the way to the ceiling. So if you want it short, let us know immediately, all right? Because by the end of the day, we're going to have this frame done. Um, let's come on, keep it rolling, and come right here. Now, we have this door here. Right, we're going to swing it. You, you can, it's okay. Just, just speak, speak up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, so we're swinging it out. We're going to swing it this way. Yes, I'm going to take the the same door. Same door. We're going to keep the same door and swing it out. And I'm trying to remember. I thought y'all said something about maybe making the door bigger, but I don't think we have any doors of this style on site bigger, do we? I'll have to sort. I was. That's one right, of the he'll things. He'll look around. Yeah. If he has one bigger. We'll frame it in. If not, this is the size to the bathroom door. They will gain two inches just on that door, though. Because, because it's a, not a pocket door anymore. Because it's not a pocket door. Good. Good. All right, step in here just so we can see. This is the new size of the bathroom. Your commode is here, and the end of your toilet is right about here. So you still have one, you still have three feet of space in front of the toilet. Then we have our vanity here, and so you have enough room. You have enough room for laundry bins, anything you can think of. You got plenty of room here. Giant mirror, mule, mural. Bad, you that? Mural. Mural. You can't even say. <laughs> I it. I didn't say it either. <laughs> you got the caught. So yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. So just keep it rolling. Let's walk in here. Follow me. See the ball spot. Something to think about before you get here is, I've got the mag lock with me, by the way. So we have the cabinets going here, but we have plugs here. The thing I wanted to tell you, let's say you put your, your TV monitoring system here. We're just going to run the wires on the outside. I see no reason to put them on the inside of the wall because if your security alarm system, people come in and they start rewiring this thing, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to track them up the wall. So we'll just bring our cables up in a corner, the Cat 6 or anything, a cable, anything else we need. We're just going to run them up in the, in the corner and zip tie them just for that reason because I know I know alarm companies and they will not fish in the walls, especially when we've got this thing come in real close. Because we have three quarter inch flooring and we have the half inch drywall. And we have steel ties in all the corners. And if their drill bit hits one of those steel ties, drill bit's done. So I just know how they operate. And I think that's it. Do you have anything else? No. These are, are these the extra doors? Those are the ones that came from upstairs. Okay. We're going to use two of those on these doors. Right. So there was four of these doors. And upstairs, when I was talking about the closet, the two that's left over would be on each side of the TV. And I was just trying to use what product we had on the job. Josh, do you have Nothing. anything else to add? No. How about that? I covered everything. I yay, think so. Yay for me. Okay. By the way, it's 32 degrees night, uh, 28 degrees tomorrow night, freezing for the third night, then we're back to spring. So it's, I think they call it a strawberry winter or something like that around here. Or farmer's fools or something. It's some weird name to have for them. Um, we did get your message about keeping the door symmetrical, and I think that's about it. Let's shut it down, and I'll send it to them.